Hi, my name's Jack and welcome to another Kit Guru review. In today's video, I'm taking a look at the Ava Media Dual Cam, a two-in-one webcam that lets you stream two different camera angles at the same time. This webcam offers 2K or 1080p at 30 FPS, depending on which camera you use, and is aimed at giving you the freedom and flexibility to stream in many different ways. Priced at $149.99, the dual cam certainly isn't a cheap webcam, placing it in an interesting spot price-wise when you take into consideration the specs. Ava Media is a pretty well-known brand in the streaming and peripherals world, having produced many well-known capture cards, microphones, and streaming control centers. They also recently released the Live Streamer Cap 4K, which enables you to capture 4K 30fps HDR footage from a DSLR or mirrorless camera with a clean HDMI output, and is essentially a great alternative to Elgato's CamLink. This is actually a pretty great product, I've been using it myself with my a7 III to monitor my footage, and the footage looks so good. I actually remember reviewing the Ava Media Live Gamer HD about 8 years ago, and even then the quality of the Ava Media products was good. Well, the dual cam certainly has an interesting appeal, offering a 2-in-1 solution and even picture-in-picture -picture for live streaming. And I'll be honest with you, I don't usually get excited when it comes to webcams, I mean usually they're all pretty much the same, but the dual cam offers some really exciting features. And it's great to see something so fresh and innovative, but is it any good? So inside the box we get the usual here, a quick start guide, a detachable 2 meter USB-C to USB-A cable, a great length and I'm a big fan of detachable cables, then we get the webcam itself. In another box tucked away at the side, there's a small desktop tripod. This is actually quite a weighty tripod with a metal ball head, which is nice to see. The legs all have rubber feet to keep the tripod planted to your desk, and height-wise, the tripod stands at around 13 centimeters, but if you need a little bit of extra height, the legs are also extendable if you press the button on the inside of each leg, and in total, the height is around 16.5 centimeters. You can also make the legs a little bit narrower and you'll get a little bit more height, you'll get around 23 centimeters, but then you reduce the stability. Now, the one thing that bothers me about the tripod is the fact that it looks nothing like the one in the photos on the website. I'm guessing that's just some kind of generic tripod they've used in the images, but a lot of people will probably think that this is the one that comes with the webcam. And this one in the photos actually is a lot better because it's a lot taller, and the one that comes with the webcam is a lot shorter, and to be honest, I can't really see how it would work unless you want a, an angle like underneath your face. Tripod aside though, let's take a look at the webcam itself. It's made entirely out of plastic, so there's definitely not a premium feel to this product, but it's a webcam and that sort of thing doesn't really bother me. On the underside of the webcam we have a quarter inch tripod mount, and at the back of the webcam there's the USB-C port for connecting this to your computer. The webcam does feature a universal mounting clip. This clip has a fairly low profile and doesn't overhang too much on your monitor, which is great if you have one with a thin bezel. But for those of you who have no bezel monitors, you may still get a slight overhang. The mounting clip does feature rubber padding to keep it firmly gripped to your monitor, and it's been really sturdy during all my tests. So taking a closer look at the webcam, both cameras feature privacy shutters, each side features blue LEDs to indicate when the cameras are on, and there's also two omnidirectional microphones, one on each side, to capture audio based on where you have the camera pointed. The left camera features a 2 megapixel CMOS sensor with an f2.2 aperture. This certainly isn't a fast aperture when compared to a lot of other modern webcams, and you'll see how this affects the quality in low light later in the video. The left camera has a maximum resolution of 1920 by 1080 at 30 fps, and it has a 71 degree field of view. In terms of movement, the left camera can be rotated 90 degrees upward and minus 15 degrees downward. This camera pivots from the actual mounting clip and isn't independent like the right camera. The right camera has a 5 megapixel CMOS sensor with an f2 aperture, so this is a faster lens, meaning it should be better than the left camera in low light. The right camera also has a higher resolution compared to the left camera at 2595 by 1944 at 30 fps. It also has a wider 76 degree field of view, and it's quite noticeable compared to the left camera. This camera has the most rotation out of the two and can rotate 195 degrees upwards and minus 75 degrees downwards. This camera is supposed to be for aiming down at your desk and showing stuff you're working on or rotating all the way around and potentially showing someone else sat on the opposite side of you. It is worth mentioning that the right camera does have a more square aspect ratio by default, but I'll show you how to change that in the software later. And both cameras feature autofocus. I must admit it's a bit of a shame that there's no 60 FPS offered on this webcam. I do feel like as a teaching and you know online classes type of webcam, 60 FPS would be a real benefit. For those of you wondering about a lack of 4K, I don't really feel like this is an issue. Practically no online streaming website even supports 4K. And most people, if you're streaming to someone on like a laptop or a phone, 4K isn't gonna make a big difference.
Setting this up with your computer is really easy as it's plug and play, and your computer should automatically detect the left and right camera as two separate inputs. And that's pretty much it for the specs, to be honest. So before we head into the software, here's a few samples of the camera's quality. So first off, let's take a look at the left webcam, which is only 1080p 30fps. This camera looks okay, I wouldn't say it's great, and unfortunately it's quite tight as well due to that 71 degree field of view. Looking at the left camera in different situations, such as low light, you can see the camera actually handles low light pretty respectfully. The only light being used here is my monitor's light. Although there's definitely some hot spots on my face showing that the auto exposure isn't quite right and is slightly overexposing. You can tell as well that the image is breaking up a little bit, it definitely doesn't look as clear as when we use an artificial light or in natural daylight. Autofocus is also a little sketchy in low light, often hunting and trying to find the right spot to focus, but this is expected in low light. With an artificial light, the auto exposure still seems to be slightly overexposed, but in all doesn't look too bad. Autofocus also seems to be relatively snappy and doesn't hunt too much when we use a proper light source. The image also looks a lot cleaner because there's no noise due to the low light. Natural daylight also offers pretty similar results. It's still a little bit overexposed, but in general, not too bad. Autofocus is pretty much spot on in situations where we've got a light source. It's worth mentioning that during my tests with auto exposure turned off and with the manual exposure used, the highlights are still a little overblown. And there seems to be a very fine line between being overexposed and being underexposed. And I can't seem to get this camera looking quite right. So now let's take a look at the right camera, which in my opinion is definitely the best of the two, especially as it offers that 2K resolution and slightly faster aperture of F2 compared to the f2.2 on the left camera. In low light, the right camera definitely looks a lot better, and that's down to the combination of a better sensor and the f2 aperture letting in more light. The right camera also seems to have better colour reproduction and is slightly more saturated than the left camera. So throwing them both up on the screen now, hopefully you can see what I mean. The right camera definitely looks better, there's more colour, it just looks like a nicer image. So with continuous lighting, the right camera really starts to show its better performance over the left camera being much sharper, and overall the image quality is a lot more pleasing compared to the left. In natural light, the expected result, not as clear as using an artificial light, but still better than the left camera by a long shot. And in all the well lit situations, the autofocus performs as expected, still snappy and not hunting around too much, which is nice to see. I have used the original Razer Kio in the past, and one thing I noticed about that camera is that the focus was always a little bit off, it was always hunting, even in well lit situations. So it's nice to see that this camera seems to have the autofocus pretty much nailed. So one criticism I have of both of the cameras is the motion blur. So here's an example, and this is mainly due to the fact that the cameras are 30 FPS. Whereas if you had a 60 FPS camera, you wouldn't get as much motion blur. If if any. But in low light the motion blur is exaggerated even more and this is likely down to the shutter speed. The software doesn't actually let you customise the shutter speed or the ISO or anything like that. So my guess is the shutter speed is slowing right down to let in more light and that's what's causing the excessive blurring. I don't really think the blurring is awful but again I think for something that's supposed to be a showcase webcam so you can teach classes and stuff like that having this kind of motion blur is very distracting. Both cameras each have a mono omnidirectional microphone and weirdly the microphones have the same kind of inconsistencies. The left microphone actually doesn't sound as good as the right microphone. I don't really know why that is. I'd have thought they'd both be exactly the same but there's definitely more more clarity with the right microphone. So let's have a quick listen to those tests. So this is the audio from the left microphone in the dual cam. What do you guys think? This is the kind of audio you can expect if you're doing, you know, a Zoom call, a Skype call, whatever you're doing with this webcam, this is the kind of audio you'll get with the built-in mic. Now I don't really ever use built-in microphones in webcams or cameras or anything. I always opt for something like this, which is an XLR microphone. This is the Rode NT1A. So this has been the left microphone. Let's now take a listen to the right microphone. So here's a quick audio test with the right microphone and the right camera, so you can see how they work together. This, in my opinion, is the better microphone. For some reason, the left microphone had a slight buzzing for me, and I'm not really sure if that may just be my unit or if it's consistent through all of these dual cams. So yeah, this is the right microphone. How does it sound? So now let's jump into the software. So the software we're using is called Cam Engine and is available for Windows and Mac and for the most part has run smoothly on my computer. This software offers a lot of different features, giving you a ton of flexibility. The best thing about this software is that it actually creates a virtual camera that you can then use with Zoom, OBS, you know, Skype, whatever it is you use. Which means that if you apply effects in Cam Engine, it's then transferred to those other programs. 
So when you first open up the software, you're asked to select a use type, and you can choose between live streaming or conference calling. Now depending on which one you choose, you'll next be given some layout and source options. These don't really matter that much because you can just change them later. So by default, you're given the right camera as the primary camera, and that's because this, in most situations, would be your showcase camera, whether you're showcasing a product or teaching an online class, for example. Now by default, the resolutions are set to 2592 by 1944 at 30 FPS for the right camera, and 1280 by 720 for the left camera. Now this was actually a bit of a surprise for me considering the left camera is advertised as 1080p. But it turns out when you actually use both cameras at the same time, the left camera is limited to 720. Which is a bit of a shame, but I suppose, you know, if you're really small on the screen, it's not a big deal. Now, if you remember, I mentioned how the right camera is a little bit square. So to change this, all you need to do is right click on the image, click on source settings and change the resolution from 2592 by 1944 to 2592 by 1456 or 1920 by 1080. Both give you a 16 by 9 ratio. So it's probably easiest if I go through this software in sections, starting off with the horizontal bar at the top. So at the top left here, you can see the left and right camera. Now, when I click on each one of these, it basically enables me to specify which camera is affected by the adjustments I make. So for this, I'll select the right camera. And to edit the left camera, just select that instead. So the first adjustment in the lineup is zoom, which is fairly straightforward. This is a digital zoom, so I wouldn't really recommend using it, but it might be useful in some situations. Next is the arrow, and this is the drag and resize tool for the video frame. This tool lets you resize the image and then move it around. The next tool is the hand tool, and this simply moves the image inside the frame I've already set. Next up, there's the window tool, and this just removes all of the software's UI. I'm not really sure why this is an option, as it doesn't really serve much of a purpose. The following tool is the transform tool, and from here you can rotate and flip the camera and mirror the camera, and this is actually really useful, and I'll show you why. So if you want to take advantage of the 2K camera on the right hand side, by default this is upside down with the idea being that you'd be pointing it downwards or across from you. But with the software you simply click on the horizontal flip and now it's the right way up and you can use this webcam as the primary camera now. So now not only have we got the higher resolution camera pointed at me, but also it has a wider field of view. This is the camera I would use for Zoom and Skype and stuff like that. I probably wouldn't use the left camera. The next tool is the swap tool and this simply just swaps the two cameras. So if you have the right one as the larger image, but you want to make it the smaller one, you press this button and it swaps the two. Really straightforward. So the last item is the screenshot tool. And the idea of this is you can just take a screenshot and then share it or do whatever you want with it. But that's what it does. It just takes a screenshot and by default, it saves it to my documents. So there are the options available on the horizontal row. Let's take a look at the vertical column. Firstly, you have the layout settings. And with one click, I can switch between different preset layouts to use. And again, these can all be customized in any way you like. What's nice is that the software does also seem to remember your edits. The next tool gives us all of the main video settings. Our basic settings include brightness, contrast, hue, saturation, and sharpness. Then we also have the advanced tab. Now this lets us change a lot of different options, including the anti-flicker. If you're in the UK, you want to set this to 50 Hertz. There's also a backlight compensator, although I can't see much difference when using this at all. It just seems to add a little bit more overall exposure. Then there's the option to change the exposure manually, which is a nice touch, although there are no functions here for shutter speed or ISO, like I mentioned earlier. So how it's doing exposure is anyone's guess. It could be slowing down the shutter speed, then causing more motion blur, or it could be bumping the ISO, causing more noise. Who knows? Then we've got the gamma settings, and adjusting this does nothing good for the picture quality, in all honesty. It just makes me look like a comic or something, some really bad Photoshop edit. I would probably never use this gamma correction in any situation. Finally, we have the white balance adjustment, and I really like the fact that this is included. A lot of webcams don't include this, so we can turn off auto white balance, and we can manually set it. A lot of webcams do tend to go one way or the other a little bit too much, either too cool or too warm, so it's nice that you can customize this within the software. So the next tool gives us some filter options, such as skin smoothing, and for some reason, skin tone, which makes you a little bit whiter. Um, <laughs> I'm not really sure why this one's included. Either way, these are both features I would never use. The next tool, and again, another one that is fairly redundant, but some people might use it. This feature enables you to put on a lot of different augmented reality filters. Some of these are kind of funny, I guess, but again, not really useful. Next, we have the Keystone Correction tool, and this one probably is the most useful out of all of the filters on here, but unfortunately, it's only available for the right camera. If you've ever had a projector, you know that Keystone Correction basically straightens up images, and this does the same thing in the software. So if you're showing off a document or something like that, you can use Keystone Correction to change the perspective. This is great if you've got the webcam pointed downwards and the perspective isn't quite right, and you want to focus purely on a document. 
if you're someone that does online classes and you're, I don't know, teaching sketching or something like that, I can really see this being quite useful. This feature does tend to work best with pieces of paper, documents, tablets, keyboards, things like that. Something that's kind of like a static object. It's not really gonna work if things are moving around. Next, we have the focus settings. So for the right camera, you can choose between autofocus, manual focus, and fixed focus. Fixed focus basically autofocuses quickly onto a static object, and then the focus is fixed at that point. This is actually really useful if you're a streamer and you stay the same distance from the camera most of the time. This will just prevent the camera autofocusing unnecessarily, meaning you're not gonna be distracting people in your stream with some weird autofocus going on. You can just have a fixed focus and you'll be in focus all the time. Now for the left camera, unfortunately, we don't have this option. You can just manual focus or autofocus. And finally, in these settings, we have the virtual background, and this is powered by NVIDIA RTX cards. For some reason, this works really well on the left webcam, which is actually the worst quality webcam, and is terrible on the right camera. I'm not really sure why this is a thing, because you'd have thought, with the right camera being better quality, that this software would you know, work better with it. But if you are planning to do any streaming, this is actually pretty good. If you're gonna be small and off in the corner, you can just quickly turn on virtual background. You can choose from a file. You can add transparency, which requires some third-party software. You can use a solid color or add a fake blur. And the fake blur is actually pretty good. So the last few options available in the software are the profiles. Here you can make a number of different profiles for different applications. So you could have one set up for Zoom, one for OBS and stuff like that. Then you have your account info. And finally, you've got your main settings, and from here you can choose your language, your video resolution output, screenshot paths, and choose between dark mode, light mode, Vulkan, OpenGL, and that's pretty much it for the software. Hopefully I went through that in enough detail to give you an idea of how this software works, and if you do want to use these filters and adjustments in your software like Zoom or OBS, all you need to do is make sure the Cam Engine is running, and then when you open Zoom and you start a call, you just select the Cam Engine virtual camera. So after using this camera for a few weeks, I think it's clear, at least to me, that this webcam is aimed more towards teaching and online classes, more so than video game streaming. But that said, I still think this would be really good for streaming as well, especially as there's so many different features in the software. And for a lot of people, this could be an easy solution to just start streaming quickly. You don't need a lot of experience in OBS, for example, to set up all this kind of stuff. You can just set it up in Cam Engine, put it in OBS and you're ready to go. I do think the Ava Media Cam Engine is a fantastic bit of software to be quite honest. It works really well and I've never had any issues with it. If teaching online classes is your thing, I definitely recommend taking a look at this webcam because I think having that option for the rotating cameras and being able to showcase different stuff is something really different that we've not seen before. And if you don't have access to like, you know, proper cameras or anything like that, this could be a great option for you. And overall the image quality while being okay, definitely could have been a little bit better, particularly on that left webcam. The right camera looks so much better compared to the left and that's just because the right camera has better resolution, better aperture, it just looks better and even the microphone's better. But let's face it, the Ava Media dual cam is trying something different and this is almost like the first of its kind from Ava Media and long term we may see some more products like this with each one seeing improvements. So I think this for a starting product is promising and I'm really excited to see where Ava Media goes with this product line. It's just a shame that the dual cam feels like it's halfway there. It could have been a really fantastic product if we had just a few more better features. So that's it for my review of the Ava Media dual cam two in one webcam. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like. It really helps out the Kit Guru channel. And be sure to subscribe if you want to see more from us. Hit that little bell icon as well, and you'll be notified when we upload another video. Don't forget to check us out on social media for the latest tech updates and support us on Patreon. And if you want to pick up a cool t-shirt like the one I've been wearing in this video, the merch links are in the description. My name's Jack, you've been watching Kit Guru, and I'll see you in the next one.